Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back for you with solving more log and exponential equations. Um, our goal today is to explore some more complicated examples of log and exponential functions that should actually say equations. Um, let's just rub that out and say e equations. Okay, so more log and exponential equations. There's going to be two of them. They're going to be slightly more complicated, and then there is a handout sheet for you to try a few more slightly complicated questions. This actually shouldn't take all that long. These are more complicated, but they're not a lot longer. There's just a little bit more um, thinking involved to them. So here's how we're going to do this. Example number one is an exponential with a product in it. So we've got an exponential here, and normally we would just take the log of both sides, but we've got a little bit of an issue here. Um, in that I've got a product. Now, we're still going to take the log of both sides, so it's not a huge issue. So we're going to say taking the log of both sides. Taking the log of both sides. So in the first step, all that amounts to is writing log in front. Log of 7 times 1.06 to the x and that's all inside this logarithm and that's going to equal the log of 5.2. Now remember this is log base 10 so when we use the calculator eventually we're using log base 10. Um, now I can't just immediately take this x and put it out front using the power law of logarithms because this 7 here is an issue. Uh, but I do have a power law that says if I have the product in the argument then I can actually split that into two logs um, that are going to be added together. That's the product law of logarithms. So what this is actually going to be is the log of 7 plus uh, the log of 1.06 to the x. Now I'm just going to make one little quick correction here with my eraser. I'm not going to put the x up here because I'm going to apply the power law at the same time and say that the x is going to go down front there. Uh, this side is fine the way it is, it's the log of 5.2. So now like we did with exponentials, I'm going to get all the logs that have x's in them on one side and all the logs that don't have x's with them on the other side. So here's my log that has an x with it, so to get it by itself I'm just going to subtract log of 7 on both sides. So this is x times the log of 1.06 is going to equal the log of 5.2 minus the log of 7 and then lastly we're going to divide both sides by the log of 1.06 which is going to get rid of that and I'm just going to be left with x so this is going to be the log of 1.06 So now I'm going to add just a couple of things in here before we finish it off and saying that um, this line here I got, I went from this line here to this line here by both product and power law. And down here, now my answer is actually just going to be if I want straight up 5 point two minus log seven um, over log of one point zero six. Now this is an exact answer. Um, the approximate answer, if I type that into the calculator, I actually get negative five point one. Now we should have a look at restrictions on the variable and go and take a look and see if that negative five point one makes sense up in here in the context of the question. Um, and x was the exponent in the first place. So if x is the exponent in the first place, they, there's nothing stopping, there's no restrictions on an exponent. So that negative 5.1 is fine. You can even plug it into your calculator and let's actually do that quickly to see if we got the right answer. I need to put 1.06 to the negative 5.1, so 1.06 uh, to the negative uh, 5.1 and I'm going to multiply that by 7 and hopefully I get somewhere close to 5.2. 
So times 7 equals 5.2004. So that is very close to 5.2. So that looks like a good answer. Um, but it's still just an approximate answer. So I'm going to put a dot on it. Okay, the next example. Um, here's logarithms where an answer doesn't quite work out, which means that we're going to get an inadmissible answer according to the context of the question. So what are we going to do in this case? Let's take a look at it. This just says the answer doesn't quite work out. So that's just only going to affect our very last step in the whole thing. Um, the way we do this must have something to do with all of the other stuff that we've done before. Well, when I see two logarithms being added together, I immediately think I can make a simplification using the product law. Uh, if there's two logarithms being added, I can pull them back into one by multiplication. Um, the same as when I had an argument that had multiplication into it, in it, I could split it apart into two, which is what I did on the last question. Um, so this one, since I've got logs that are being added, I can pull them together. So I am going to write this as the log base 6 of x times x plus 1 and that's going to equal 1. And now remember that now that I have a single logarithm on this side and it equals something, I can go by the definition of logarithm and say, well, if I take, I've got a base of 6, and this over here is my exponent, so I've got a base of 6 with an exponent of 1, that has to equal the argument of the logarithm, x times x plus 1. So that means 6 is going to equal x squared plus x, um, and 0 is going to equal x squared plus x minus 6. Now this thing actually does indeed factor. I'm always going to look for factoring, especially if it's a simple trinomial because it's very quick to figure out whether it factors or not. Uh, since it's a simple trinomial, I can simply read it backwards. I'm looking for something that multiplies to 6 and subtracts 2, 1. There's an understood 1 there. So it multiplies to 6 and subtracts to 1 is going to be 3 and 2. I know the signs have to be different because this term here is negative. Uh, and I know since this is positive, the bigger number has to be positive. So this is positive 3 and negative 2. Uh, so that means that x equals negative 3 and positive 2 if this is going to be 0. So now let's go back up and see how that looks in the context of the question. Well, we can immediately see that negative 3 is a problem because if I put negative 3 in here, then I have an argument that is negative. And you cannot put a negative argument in a logarithm. So negative 3 is inadmissible. Inadmissible. Uh, and it doesn't matter that negative 3 is also inadmissible in this question, or in this answer, as as soon as it's inadmissible in 1, it's an inadmissible answer, okay, because it just cannot be used. Now, 2 is okay, because 2 is positive here, and if I put 2 in here, I get 3, so that argument's positive. You do have to take a look at both of them. Um, there was one year I gave a test, and both answers were actually inadmissible, so there wasn't actually a an answer that worked out appropriately. Um, so check and make sure that that isn't the case. Uh, now there's a few more questions for you to try and um, see how you like them. And we're going to stop that right there.